Welcome back to the Surf Mastery Podcast. Today's guest is Oscar Hetherington. Oscar is a surfer and photographer from here in New Zealand. And Oscar came into my awareness last year when I saw his amazing images after he won the grand prize at the 2023 Follow the Light Surf Photography Awards. And it turns out he lives just around the corner, so we got to do this one in person. Uh, The intro and outro music was written by Joe Cole, a New Zealand musician. I gave him an early listen to this episode and he came up with this original piece, which I love. So big thanks to Joe for doing that. Uh, You can listen to his recorded originals on Spotify, Joe Cole, J-O-E-C-O-L-E, and Joe Cole Music on Instagram. Today's guest, Oscar Hetherington, is at oscar.hetherington.com on Instagram and oscarhetheringtonvisuals.com of course all of that stuff is in the show notes and at surfmastery.com for the links but for now please enjoy my conversation with Oscar when did you start surfing? I started surfing probably I think I was 7 or 8 years old yeah, we lived in Australia for a couple of years, luckily enough, um, up in Queensland near Noosa, so yeah, picked up a surfboard then, and then, yeah, 23 now, and I guess I grew up in Wanaka mainly, first of all, um, which is, yeah, pretty far away from the coast, as you can imagine. Yeah, I guess that's when I was first introduced to surfing, but then, since then, every holiday we've been on, every time we've been to the beach, I've just wanted to keep surfing, basically. No, sir. Was that longboarding? Uh, no, nah, shortboarding. Like I say, seven or eight years old, dad was like pushing me in on a little soft top kind of thing. So dad's a surfer? Nah, dad wasn't a surfer, but living in a place like Noosa, you know, he brought a board, just couldn't help himself. He started learning. I started learning. My little brother started learning. Yeah, we were all just out there as much as we could and there's no excuse not to be when the, you know, they've got warm water and good waves to learn in over there. So that's where it all began for me, really. Did it begin for your family as well, from living in Noosa? Did your dad keep surfing? Did your brothers keep surfing? My brother still surfs, just just for fun. Yeah, he's more focused on rugby and other things. Dad is quite into kite surfing. Yeah, he's always been like keen on anything in the outdoors, skiing, sailing. Yeah, gave surfing a go. Anything outdoors he loves. So yeah, he still kite surfs, but he doesn't surf anymore. So out of the family, it's mainly me. I guess I was addicted to it, yeah. 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 And then what about uh, what about art? I've always been pretty creative. Like from a young age, I don't know, just curious and like drawing, painting. I remember picking up a camera when I was probably 11 or 12 years old and just like curious to how they made movies, how photos were taken, you know, all sorts of stuff like that. I probably didn't appreciate art when I was young, but I was just curious on like how it was made, how people made movies from like the special effects to how they filmed the action stuff, yep. yeah, all of that. Did you have a favourite director or a favourite movie or a favourite photographer, artist back then? Or? Not really, no. I think, I think I was too young. Like I say, I was just curious on all of it and how it worked. Like I'd... Yeah, you'd watch a movie and there'd be some shots where I'd just think, like, how how did they do that? Like, was it a drone or a helicopter or a gimbal or, like, a lot of it was movie stuff. But, yeah, I guess I was too young to kind of think too deeply into how, well, to understand how it was actually done and have favourites and things like that, yeah. Mm, so you were in awe of cinematography? Yeah, I would say that's probably the best way to put it. Yeah. yeah. And just, like, yeah, watching any type of sport really from rugby to surfing to diving you know all of that stuff you'd watch it and just go far out there looks amazing like I want to go and do that activity first of all but then how do you show other people kind of the the things you get up to and the adventures and the stories behind the sport I guess yeah 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 initially like I started shooting it was nothing to do with photography, really. It was 
like I say, been in Wanaka once again, going on adventures, going skiing and fishing and mountain biking, all of that. It was going to amazing places, seeing amazing things, doing sports in the mountains and wanting to show friends at school, wanting to show mum and dad, hey, this is the amazing snow we scored or check out this fish we caught or whatever. And then, yeah, taking photos kind of and videos of stuff like that. And then, yeah, after a while it kind of, I don't know, everywhere I went I was just carrying a camera going like, just looking at the world the world a bit differently I guess as well mm, what was your first camera well I had a GoPro to start with when I was yeah 11 or 12 years old and then I had a Nikon D3000 I think it was from memory yeah just the entry level SLR yeah yeah nothing special it was second hand off trade me for my 14th or 15th birthday kind of thing yeah yeah and then yeah had that for a few years and then just sort of slowly upgraded to to where I'm at now yeah what are you using now? Now I'm using all Sony, so I shoot with a Sony A7R three, yeah, and a Sony A7R four mainly, and yeah, just Sony lenses as well. And then in the water, I shoot with the Aquatec housing. Nice. Yeah. Yep. When was your first uh, like recognition of that? Hey, you're actually doing pretty well at photography or, or, or filming. A few times we went away on fishing trips or mountain biking like you go away for Easter weekend or whatever and then I remember cutting up like a little I don't know two minute mountain bike video posting it on YouTube and then you go to school next week and a few people are like oh that was a crazy video like saw you what you got up to on the weekend and then I guess that kind of gave me a little bit of confidence I probably yeah made a few few edits over a year or so and then I actually contacted a family friend of ours who runs a mountain bike race and just said, hey, can I come and shoot this whole event for free just to like see if I can, you know, shoot a day's worth of content and make like a, just a recap video for the event. And I, that went well. I remember staying up till like two in the morning editing the day of the event, put it up online like nine o'clock the morning after and everyone, you know, from the event was just waking up, checking Facebook and being like, oh my God, there's like a video out already. Like I just put my heart and soul into it. And then a lot of people just from that were like, oh, this is like super cool. And I guess, yeah, no one had shot that event before. Um, yeah, I guess cameras weren't like, yeah. What year was that? That would have been, I think 2015. Yeah, so cameras were around for sure, but no one had, like, people had shot stills of that event, but they'd never shot a video of it. I think it was just something different, and people, yeah, were just stoked, and yeah, I, yeah, had people from, friends from school, family, friends, all sorts of people. I think even one of the local newspapers rang me up and was like, oh, hey, that was, like, such a cool video, and they put it on their website or a few things like that, so that was, yeah, positive encouragement, and then from then on I guess it slowly built the next mountain bike race I was kind of like oh hey do you guys like need need someone to film a little video for you I've done this one before and then yeah it's just built from there I guess oh cool because I mean this year you got recognized in the surf world for your work so what would that feel like so that was for the follow the light foundation awards um that was crazy that was yeah it, it was a strange thing I guess growing up in Wanaka I never, I was never that close to the ocean, so I could never shoot surfing that often. Um, when I went to university, I decided, right, I'm going to go to Dunedin. There's good waves down there. I can study and just shoot as much as I can. Um, so I went down there, and I think my first year down there, I got a few cool shots, whatever, found out those Follow the Light Foundation Awards were on, entered a few and got a bit of feedback back, and most of it was positive. And I kind of thought, oh, I like this, it's quite cool. And all, like the list of the people that had won that award in the past, like Nick Green, Ray Collins, Chris Burkhard, there's, yeah, just a never-ending list of people that have won it. So then I guess every year my kind of goal was to just take a few better photos just solely for that portfolio. Yeah, so they, they always ask for 15 images and I had 15 good ones four years ago and then at that a year later when it was time to enter again I'd go right which ones can I swap out and for a couple of years there I'd swap out most of them and then two years ago 
I made it into the top 10 and I thought, all right, I'm doing something right, heading in the right direction here and whatnot. And then last year I made it into the top five and I was like, right, like I'm doing everything right, but I know just made a few tweaks and kind of really broke down the images that I was entering. Yeah. So broke it down to some surf action stuff, some lifestyle and like portrait stuff, like behind the scenes of surfing really. And then just some like seascapes. So just really broke it down for those th- three areas, picked my five favorite photos and then yeah, ended up winning it somehow, headed over to America and yeah, it was a crazy trip to go over there and just be recognized for like, yeah, I don't know. It had been, like I say, a goal of mine for so long. Yeah, no, that's awesome. Is anything, any opportunities stemmed out of that? Yeah, there's been quite a few. On, honestly, like over there on the award night, for example, like I'd never seen that many surfers in one place before. Like in New Zealand, it's, I don't know, a, a busy day at the beach here. There's 20 people in the water, 30 people in the water. There at that night, there was one or 2,000 people and everyone surfed everyone was there for the same reason so like just yeah the scale over there was awesome so from that I'm heading away to do a trip with Billabong this year which will be pretty cool I don't know exactly where or when I'm headed with them but I'm yeah, looking forward to doing some work with them yeah yeah um they're obviously they've been one of the leading surf brands for as long as anyone can remember so that'll be awesome to get a foot in the door with them, meet some of their athletes and their creatives. And yeah, I'm really, really excited to see what we can come up with. Cool. Are you? Will you be the only photographer on that trip? You know, I'm not sure. No. Haven't told you yet? No, haven't told me. I've been in, in talks with them. They're just planning out a few trips at the moment. And then, um, yeah, waiting for them to get back to me and figure out where, we, where we're off to. Yeah, oh, that'll be exciting. Yeah. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. And I think the... One thing within surf photography or in surfing as a whole that I like to show when I shoot is like it's the whole adventure of surfing. It's not just someone standing up on a wave doing a cool turn or anything. Like there's there's so much more to it, you know, that whole kind of adventure, searching for waves, like reading maps, weather patterns, all of that, that's what I love about it too like like I say there's so much more to surfing than getting a good wave because there's so much before that can happen that has to line up oh all of those zoomed in shots of the perfect turn that's been done I mean no one knows who took that photo yeah but you see a a shot that Chris Picard has done it feels that you feel the adventure of surfing or Rambo's Rambo's like yeah all those adventure surfing shots Mm -hmm. And then you probably listened to the episode I did with Rambo. There's a lot that goes yeah, behind to capture those moments. Yeah, there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes. Like I spend hours on Google Maps. That's yeah, something that my mates give me a bit of shit for because I don't know. It's like a, it's, yeah, a strange obsession, but it's like just always looking for right what's out, out there, finding new waves, looking at where storms are hitting, like there's people have been to a lot of these breaks before and stuff, but I haven't. So it's, yeah, it's really interesting trying to line everything up and then going to shoot that as well. It's So you're actively seeking empty spots that no one goes to, essentially Google Maps. Yeah. I mean, this, the New Zealand coastline's perfect for that. Yeah, the New Zealand coastline's perfect for that. And I think... Rambo in particular has probably influenced that a lot like just some of his empty lineup shots you know they're just amazing like it yeah everyone who surfs in New Zealand and around the world knows him and his stuff um so yeah he's been probably one of my biggest influences over the years but yeah like you say just checking out the coastline on Google Maps and then figuring out what swells are going to work for that spot and you don't get it right first go like you might have to go back to the same spot four or five times until you get it on a good day or you might go back or you might yeah you could get it really good the first time and then go back and back and back and it's just yeah sometimes 
those spots at like kind of one hit wonders in a way. Yeah. If you pull up to a spot and the waves are pumping, what's the feeling of like, do I shoot or do I surf? Or do you purposely not take a surfboard? Oh, that's an interesting one. If I'd like to say I, I surf when it's good, but I shoot when it's great. So there's kind of a difference for me. Like if it's, yeah, if it's anywhere, yeah, if it's out of 10, if it's like a nine or 10, out of 10 then I'll shoot because there's there's only a handful of days a year where the surf is double overhead offshore and there's one or two talented guys out or no one out or a few mates out or whatever it may be but there's a lot of days when it's good when it's you know head high the wind's a little bit funny or whatever but I find I can go and have a lot of fun in good waves but it's hard to get amazing photos when the waves are just good like you kind of need great waves like I say because I've I've spent hours sitting on the beach shooting mates who are like really talented surfers and yeah sat there for hours shooting and shooting and shooting and shooting and it's like it's all right but it's not really doing its thing and then you go home and you've got a thousand photos to go through you've been sitting in the cold on the beach alone for four hours and you get nothing and you're like damn maybe I should have just gone and surfed because you would have had a whole lot more fun and shooting I guess like it's experience you're watching the ocean it's all of that you're playing around with your camera trying different things to make make moments look amazing in those average conditions but it's still quite hard yeah to, I know what you mean yeah to nail a shot on an average day it's probably easier like if you're sitting there and it's nine to ten out of ten mm-hmm the swell is peaking and you're waiting for that one set to come through yeah and you get the beautiful shot there's probably no one on that set anyway yeah because they're out of position or that's the set that you can capture from the beach but man you've got to know the spot inside and out to actually catch Mm -hmm. one of those waves oh yeah 100 percent. and i also think like on that note that a few times i've been lucky enough where you'll pull up shoot a spot for say an hour or two and it's like great waves, like I say, it's yeah, just perfect, picture perfect. And I'll shoot it and I'll go, right, I've got some good shots in there. Like quickly look through my camera and go, yeah, right, I, I know there's some money shots in there. I'm going to go and surf because I feel like I've captured enough to kind of like satisfy the photography side of it. Yeah. And then going out and catching a few waves after that, that's like kind of the best of both worlds. Oh, yeah. Yeah nice yeah yeah there was a period i did my when i was probably 22 i did my acl so i was out surfing for a good you know, back then it was 12 months rehab and i just just kept going to the beach and kept taking photos and watching surfing and watching waves and then when i got back into surfing i was better yeah and i think it was just because surfing is so much about just getting to know the ocean mm-hmm and the rhythms and watching waves and and reading waves that I think you get to do that in quite an intimate way with the camera. For sure. Because you're watching from pulled back and then you can zoom in on your your lens. Yeah. And you watch, oh, you know, that surfer should have been here. Yeah. Did you not see that set where I saw it coming? Mm -hmm. I was ready with the camera. He wasn't ready with his paddling or... Yeah. So there's a lot of that. Yeah, I, I, yeah, completely understand. Like I've, yeah, spent hours and on hours looking at the ocean through a lens and I think it's yeah overall it's definitely improved my surfing and I know other photographers and filmers the exact same like you say you you it begins to become kind of like second nature to you but you you can pull up to the beach and you know where the rips are and all of that because you've seen it hundreds of times before or you'll see someone and you without even like lifting a camera you can see now that person's too deep they're not going to make that wave or now they did a turn in the wrong spot or whatever so yeah it kind of goes hand in hand in surfing because then you can go out and be like right you know what waves are going to be the good ones whether it's the slightly smaller ones in the sets or the last one of the set first wave of the set like yeah there's yeah I definitely think shooting the sport that I also partake in has been benefited me as a surfer yeah but I also think it's benefited me as a photographer because 
I know the moments that surfers look for. And I, I'd like to think that I know how how to shoot the sport because I, I do it, you know what I mean? I, yeah, like especially shots shots in the water and stuff, That's it's angles that only surfers normally get to see. If you're paddling out into the lineup and someone gets barreled right in front of you, that's mm-hmm. not many people get to see that angle. Yeah. But as a surfer, we all have seen that before and you go, oh, that's like the best moment. Mm-hmm. So when you're shooting, I'm like, right. I know this is where I need to be and if someone can surf that wave in that way and I'm in the right spot then it might all line up or if it's an empty wave that makes me just as happy because it it takes one less variable out of the equation yeah yeah how often is it the case when as you're pulling up and parking your car that's the best set always (laughs) (laughs) yeah every time eh? yeah I think I've definitely become better over the past year or two just like slowing things down whether I'm shooting or surfing just I know like often even with mates around here I'll pull up to the beach and they'll chuck their suits on and just go jump straight in the water I'll I'll find myself 10 minutes behind them and it doesn't bother me because I know I, you just get a chance to feel feel a few sets come through look up and down the beach at other banks and things like that rather than like you say it's yeah always the case you pull up and you see the wave of the day come in and you're like right I'm going surfing there and that might not actually be the best spot that might just be the odd fluky one that comes through and is amazing but down the beach a few hundred meters it could be just really consistent yeah no I I think a lot of surfers don't watch the waves enough yeah big time I, I agree for sure and I think that whole time thing is like slowing everything down when you're surfing is super important i reckon like watch well from from shooting so much surfing you'll often see people pedal into a wave and just rush a lot you know they'll jump straight to their feet like in a, a split second and then they might try jam three or four turns into a wave where you often you watch good guys like pros and stuff they'll stay down for a second longer time their pop up perfectly and do like two amazing turns rather than three or four average turns you know i feel like yeah yeah, just slowing things down it's something i've had to learn because it's kind of like controlling that like excitement and like oh i need to do this or like should i go on this one or whatever but just yeah and being selective on waves as well that's it's a huge thing that like a lot of people think if they get the most waves they're having the best session but it's kind of the quality versus quantity thing yeah and that yeah that's certainly a detail you have to or you can you can really focus on that with your photography because you get to go back and look at all the photos you took and yeah kind of compare or how, why did i push the shutter then it yeah. was a waste of because you know, it's not film, you don't waste any money, but you waste time going through and yeah. looking and editing. And so you kind of, you narrow down your wave selection in that way, I guess. Yeah. And um, of course that translates to your uh, surfing, really. Yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure. And it's it's definitely just time watching the ocean. I was, I was out shooting this morning and like there were some big sets coming in and I wasn't even lifting my camera to shoot them because... I'd sat there for half an hour and got, watched a few big sets come in and they just weren't hitting the bank properly or they were they were closing down, closing out. Um, but then watching and like some of those mid-sized ones that were coming through actually shaped up a whole lot better, held right from out the back the whole way through to the inside and were makeable. And then a few surfers came in and were like, oh, it's pretty average out there, like didn't get any good waves. And I was like, a lot of the time they're probably looking for the biggest wave of the day or taking those set waves where it's like if they'd stood on the beach for 15 minutes before they'd gone out it's kind of like oh maybe some of those mid-sized ones would have been a lot more enjoyable to surf yeah once everyone's finished surfing there's they want to go somewhere else there's when i was sort of your age and growing we just hang, hung out at the beach and if we weren't surfing we we usually get out quick we wouldn't sit and watch but we'd come in and have something to eat and watch the surf and 
go back out again and just hang out at the beach there was nothing there was nothing else to do there yeah. was no smartphones there was mm-hmm. just watch the beach and i think you learn a lot from from that yeah. just watching yeah for sure and it's it's watching the ocean in that sense but it's then watching edits and videos of pros doing their thing watching the comp surfers like yeah all of that stuff it's all learning whether you're breaking it down like i am with a camera like frame by frame right what should this person have done here or what would i have done there or whatever whatever you're doing it i think as long as you're learning as a surfer no matter what you're learning as long as you're learning something to do with surfing then you're like going to be heading in the right direction i think it's the moment that you stop learning is probably when surfing i don't know may become boring or you just like not as interested in it anymore yeah but i always yeah everything from conditions to equipment to different surf spots swell patterns all of that like yeah learning's fun i reckon (laughs) yeah i'm wondering i always ask this question for everyone but you have a unique perspective on it because you watch surfing a lot and probably a lot of average surfing but what's um what's the biggest mistake you think that beginners and intermediate surfers make i think probably rushing again like i say i think a lot of people yeah a combination of like wave selection and people just rushing especially like in that kind of intermediate phase of like just trying to go on any wave that comes to them yeah we're stopping and watching can just yeah i think it can improve your surfing a lot because it's it's one thing to be a good surfer but to be able to like read a wave and read the ocean and all of that and to be able to perform at you know a wave that's ever changing in front of you is yeah that's something quite different i guess to being able to do it a crazy turn i <laughs> kind of dodge that question a bit but no no this, that's I, I totally agree everyone's rushing I also find that in between waves, they're not like they check out. Yeah, yeah. There's one thing that I've I've like personally done with my own surfing recently, is after every wave, when I'm paddling back out, just when it, once I get back out the back, even if there's a set coming or whatever, just stopping and thinking, right, what did I do well on that wave? What could I have done differently? Should that bottom turn have been a little bit deeper? Should I have when I hit that in section, should I have hit it a little bit earlier? Was I a little bit late to it? Like transferred your weight in different ways. Just thinking about those things rather than just going, oh, well, there was a bad wave and then paddling back out and hoping that the next one's better. It's like that kind of learning and want to improve. When you're um, sitting on the beach photographing or if you're even the water, mm-hmm. as soon as you're like, oh, I'm just going to go to the car and grab a snack, then the wave... Yeah. that's when the wave comes yeah that's when oh that's that set that wasn't a big set and it popped out of nowhere and yeah that one hit the reef just perfectly mm-hmm. was that's and it's the same thing when you're sitting out the back and you think oh i just caught a set i'm going to paddle back out and i'm going to talk to my friend yeah and you and then that's when the the set pops out of nowhere mm-hmm. so i think a lot of surfers don't understand that surfing is if you're surfing for an hour yeah you've got to be focused on the ocean for an hour yes. not not for one minute every five minutes yeah 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 for sure and i think it's a funny one i go out with some mates around here and a few of them are just like surfing's their social life you know you've been working a week or whatever and you go out on a saturday morning for a wave and they're just talking the whole time and i feel bad but sometimes i'm like mid conversation i'm going on this wave like and they might not have seen it or they're just just out of position or whatever but like yeah you've got to be focused on what's in front of you otherwise you're gonna miss the wave of the day you're gonna get caught inside by a a big set you know like you've yeah you've got to be able to read what's happening in the ocean and react accordingly essentially yeah yeah oh totally i mean sometimes you see a lot of good surfers have the ability to riff with you but they might not look at you much they're always just watching the horizon and then halfway through a conversation they just paddle away from you and yeah you can it kind of feels rude, but it's not really. They're there to surf. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Some surfers, 
you might find, especially if you're new to surfing, you try and spark up a conversation and they won't even look at you. Yeah. They'll just blank you and, and maybe even paddle away from you. It's not because they're rude. Mm. In fact, if you went up to them when they're getting changed and asked to borrow some wax, they might be the nicest person you've ever met. Oh, for sure, yeah. But when they're surfing, it's like, don't. It's yeah. like they've, that's their time to focus on the ocean. Exactly. And it's like, it's a classic thing, but I always like to try and, if you're like chasing waves with mates or whatever, it's like you've got so much other time to catch up with people you know you're going out with your friends and you've got to drive half an hour to the beach do all the talking then when you're driving to the beach that's when you're cracking jokes and having a laugh and having fun surfing you can still do that for sure but when it's good like you don't want to miss the wave of the day because you're turned around checking out your mate's new board or whatever it is like check it out in the car park or like you know just yeah you've definitely got to focus on it and as a photographer that's a huge thing too Mm. yeah for for a few reasons i think it's when you're shooting in the water that is i think it's if you i know i've found myself once or twice thinking oh i just nailed that shot should i check it on the back of your camera and you then you check it and then the crazy set comes in and you're out of position all of a sudden or yeah you've you've got to be super aware when you're shooting in the water yeah it's it's quite hard to move as fast as well because you're in the water you're not on a surfboard as such um you've just got flippers on so it's yeah a little bit harder to get around out there um so yeah and that's that's another reason why i pay so much attention to the ocean is because if it's if there's tons of sweep down a point for example or whatever and you want to shoot in the water you've got to know what's going on because at the end of the day like the ocean's in charge Mm. you you can jump out there and think you're lined up for the perfect shot and then all of a sudden you get caught in a rip and you're dragged a few hundred meters down the beach and you've got to walk all the way back up and you've burnt all your energy you've got no photos none of that <laughs> and that's that's hard work like i've learned myself the hard way many times but what's your worst experience like I say, that that's happened to me once or twice, probably a few years ago when I was when I was younger, and you'd just pull up to the car park and go, "Holy moly!" Like the surf's incredible. All your mates are there, or a bunch of really good locals are out there, and you just jump in and don't take the time to to look. Um, yeah, I've had one or two times down south jumping in, just not reading the rips or the sweep or whatever it is, and then all of a sudden you're yeah a kilometer down the beach going far out where are my mates where are we parked like yeah and at the end of the day you just end up out of energy with nothing to show for it (laughs) and you could have avoided that situation completely if you'd stopped for five minutes and looked and figured things out a little bit um one memory that springs to mind was just after one of the covid lockdowns we a few of my mates were all down in Dunedin studying and uni was online and all of that and we went out oh, every day for probably a month to the spot down there that was just had really, really good sand. We were normally the only three or four people in the water and I think it, it must have been my first or second year shooting surfing because I only had a 3-2 and it was the middle of winter. I went down there, was shooting in the water for three or four hours and... I was just really cold like got to the point where I couldn't press the buttons on my camera and like my fingers just felt like rocks like just yeah they were just there was no movement in them my feet were the same and it was probably about a half an hour walk back to the car up this quite big hill and I thought oh yeah it's all good like walking back up the hill in my wetsuit and all that like I'll warm up like don't overthink it kind of thing and then I remember walking up the back up the hill and a few of my, my mates were talking to me and I just remember like they like a couple of times were like oh you're right like you, you you're like slurring your words a bit and stuff and I was like oh like no nah, no nah, I'm fine whatever kind of thing and then got to the car and like I couldn't do simple things like open the car door or like get my car like find my car keys and things like that and I yeah would have had some mild form of hypothermia sounds like for it, sure yeah, yeah. But I kind of yeah, got to the point where I was like, oh, no, no, just like the, the waves are firing. I'll just keep shooting, keep shooting, keep shooting. And then, yeah, it was, I was young, 
had the wrong equipment for sure so i went home that night and yeah brought like a full-on winter wetsuit with a hood <laughs> some new booties some gloves all of that because yeah I, yeah i just got taught a lesson that day and it like uh, yeah if anyone else has been in a similar experience you'll know it takes like the rest of the day to warm up basically you get home have a hot shower having hot food and you just like can't feel much basically you can't really think you're kind of just lethargic and slow and yeah that was probably one of the scariest times for sure and i think that was an experience Mm. on my part maybe a bit of overconfidence being young but yeah yeah no you're lucky you learned the lesson the not the easy way but not the hard way either yeah yeah i think (laughs) it was like on the fence yeah (laughs) that day yeah What's the biggest waves you've been out in, either surfing or shooting? I think I've I've definitely I've surfed a few days down south where it's been like pretty solid double overhead on a few of the a few of the points down there where they, they, you don't get many people. It's definitely the fastest I've gone on a surfboard as well. Um, there's a lift down there that I love, but yeah, you've got to I don't know. You, you, yeah it's a funny point break i'm not going to name it or anything but like it's the wave breaks along the point but just like a lot of points there's no beach or anything that it goes into it kind of just like sweeps past the coast and then just like goes back to nothing like it's just open ocean and you sit out there some days and it's so scary because like the water's dark and deep and murky there's kelp around there's big sea lions and yeah that's probably some of the biggest and like spookiest at the same time conditions that i've surfed in but yeah you go get to go pretty fast down some of those some of those waves ride a bigger board as well which is super fun and yeah don't worry too much about getting barreled or doing the perfect turn or anything you're just like hanging on for dear life and then shooting i've shot some probably some similar conditions but you've got to pick and choose when you shoot in the water verse on land i find because at a point like that shooting in the water it's an option but it's when it's that big and there's that much water moving and things like that and you don't have a board it's pretty high risk yeah and there's not down south where yeah where we did like a lot of a lot of missions to remote waves and things like that it's kind of like if something goes wrong down here where t- we've got no cell phone coverage we're a two-hour drive from hospital or whatever so you kind of just think right i might go surf because you've got a flotation device your mates are around and stuff but if you're shooting you're often sitting on the inside the boys are focusing on surfing there they might be a few hundred meters away from you so you kind of by yourself there's some big rocks around and all of that so that's when I might choose to surf or shoot from land rather than get in the water. Yeah, so it's just a kind of safety thing, I guess. I would, l- I'd love to shoot some bigger waves, but it's just the time and the place, really. You know, somewhere where there's a lot of people around, warm water, like you see so many shots of pipe and a lot of places like that. It's like I'd, I'd like to say that I'd back myself to swim out and shoot some of those spots. I, I haven't ever had the chance to and i'd still go in with the mindset that you've got to learn this wave and what spend a lot of time watching it and all of that but yeah i think comfort was i'm like yeah confident in myself that it, it's doable yeah some warm water would be nice eh? yeah oh yeah it's yeah much much nicer yeah <laughs> and just just easier yeah <laughs> yeah I reckon. yeah i guess we don't really get huge well, nothing compared to Hawaii here in New Zealand. But nah, not really swell wise, eh? Yeah. No, not the 18, 20 second yeah. swells. They're pretty rare. And they usually wind, the wind's all over it when we get them anyway. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. There's a funny story as well that springs to mind. And I, I shot from land this day simply because it was huge and wild. But it was one of my favorite spots down at the bottom of the South Island. And. We drove in there with, I think there was three mates and myself. We got the car stuck on the way in there. Had to push that out of the ditch because there was, yeah, a foot of snow on the ground, middle of winter. Um, 
one of the guys forgot his booties and he was like, oh, this is like the best day ever. It was, yeah, double overhead barrels, just crazy, crazy day. And the boys all went out and within an hour, one of them had come in with a snapped fin box and two others had snapped their boards and we were just like, holy moly, like it was just a massive storm, like four or five metre waves coming in 40k an hour offshore like hail for half an hour sun for half an hour hail for half an hour like it was yeah that was a pretty pretty full-on day but it's I don't know it's one of those days that you'll kind of remember for a while because (laughs) even though no one got the best wave of their life I got a few photos but nothing crazy but it was just yeah like I don't know we gave it a good go <laughs> and the ocean and mother nature just showed us who's boss. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Those days you got to keep going out though. You never know the wind, the wind drops off for half an hour and oh, exactly. you get one of those waves. We yeah. Take a photo of one. Yep. Yeah. What about your own surfing? Like are you, how's that going? Are you, are you do you film yourself to get better? Do you, how, in what ways are you progressing and learning? I've never filmed myself, honestly. It's pretty rare. It's, a, it's one of those funny things, like I'm always shooting and stuff like that, but if anyone wants to take any photos of me at any point, I'd love it because it's, yeah, it's pretty rare that anyone gets a photo or video of me doing something I love, which is surfing, really. Um, but, yeah, I'm definitely surfing a lot more now than I used to because, like I say, that. I'm just shooting when it's really good, when it's like, yeah, one of the best days of the year kind of thing, that's when I'll shoot, and if it's not quite up to that standard, I'll go and surf, so I find that I'm, yeah, surfing two or three times a week, and shooting a couple times a month still, like I like to keep my camera with me in case the conditions turn on, even for half an hour or whatever, Um, doing some, yeah, commercial shooting as well and shooting some like fun lifestyle creative stuff but definitely just focusing yeah on my own surfing yeah and it it just like more time in the water keeps you keeps you fit and healthy and all of that good stuff too so you're not tempted to leave the camera on the dashboard just (laughs) on a tripod on the beach film yourself yeah i don't know i just need to become friends with a few photographers (laughs) or pay someone to film me but nah yeah, I'm not. I'm not too worried about it. Like I say, it's always nice when someone does get a photo of you, um, or a video or whatever, and then you can analyze it a little bit. But I think, yeah, like like I mentioned earlier, when I surf nowadays after most waves, I'll kind of break down what I think I could have done better or what I read, read wrong and things like that. Um, so I think that's maybe one of the biggest ways that I'm kind of trying to improve my surfing is like reflecting on it straight after it happens rather than getting back to the car and being like oh that was like an all right surf but like kind of not knowing why it was all right or why it could be better it's kind of in the moment like reflecting on that yep no reflect self-reflection is yeah one of the key things and people a lot of people are often scared to do it they don't want to and it's definitely like there's always a fun side of surfing no like yeah that's the main reason i surf is for fun obviously but i do like you you do want to get better you know as well it's just a natural thing yeah yeah for sure and i think too like i've tried to vary my surfing a little bit i just used to only surf short boards i've got a log recently which has just been super fun for like when the conditions aren't perfect or when it's just waist high or like some of those smaller more average days and stuff just finding like different ways to enjoy surfing and that's something that's kind of kept me hooked and kept me motivated even if you'll have a a long flat spell for a month you like can still get out in the water and have some fun and try something different you know new bits of equipment and stuff but yeah keeps it interesting oh yeah switching up your equipment is it's huge for your surfing yeah having a quiver of boards that for certain conditions is because then when, when it is pumping and you jump back on your shortboard, you just, you'd be surprised how much you've improved because you've been riding different boards and yeah. re- reading waves differently because of it. Mm-hmm. And I think as well, one area, I guess it's kind of imp- improving my surfing, but it's, it's just like 
looking into equipment more and why certain boards or shapes or fin setups or whatever work better in certain conditions and why why things feel different under your feet as well i think a lot of surfers i don't know they may may go buy a new board and be like right it's got to be six foot and 34 liters or whatever and that's all that matters but it's like no there's a whole lot more to it and i maybe that comes from like a photography point of view where there's a, a lot of like technical aspects to it and stuff maybe that's what interests me about it but the equipment side of surfing is something I'm like you can always learn more about surfboards and yeah all of that stuff sometimes you don't need a brand new 1d 15 15 thousand dollar camera in every situation sometimes a polaroid actually might be more suitable for what you want or whatever yeah 100% 100% same with surfing I, I, I see especially around here it's just sometimes I go to Te Wonga and it's waist high and there's people out on these yeah. short boards that are meant for double overhead barrels yeah and that they're not catching waves they're getting angry I'm like yeah. like the amount of it it's sort of like taking a Ferrari out uh, mm. where a land cruiser should be oh exactly yeah, it, yeah. it makes no sense yeah so yeah, choosing the right board for the conditions and stepping away from that performance short board, I think is, whereas overseas, especially in California, like there's, you know, people are embracing the bigger, more alternative yes. surfboards. I mean, look at some of the, uh, like album surf. Yeah. I don't know if you follow them at all. Yeah. yeah you know, even definitely. you know when pros like, when pros stop, when they're not competing, mm-hmm. they're not on those boards either. No. Nah. <laughs> no, no, very rarely. Yeah. Eh? Like only, yeah, only the good days. Yeah, they're on a fish or a, some weird shape or mm. a longer board or or whatever. So yeah, and that all of that, like trying different equipment and and surfing different spots, like they go hand in hand. But it's that like new experience or new feeling or like experimenting and exploring. That's what keeps it interesting. You know what I mean? It's like you never quite know what you're gonna get. But yeah, equipment like it's. Yeah, surfboards, it's super interesting. There's like, I think the rabbit hole with surfboards is a lot bigger than most surfers realize. Like you say, people will go out when it's waist high and they'll be on a short board that's super high performance, like 28 liters or whatever, and it's just like, eh, maybe you should have brought a mid-length out or a log or just something different. Yes, yeah, yeah people think stab in the dark is enough variance in surfboards where they're refining yeah millimeters <laughs> yeah, yeah it's it doesn't make any sense to me yeah the, the i think big surfboards are underrated and oh, hugely yeah so it's so much fun surfing on on a log like a long board or a log in my opinion it's just, it's different as well like you you have to read the wave differently you have to react differently or well, you react and the board you know, the yeah, the board doesn't. It t- takes a lot longer, um, but yeah, it's it's all improves improves your surfing and keeps it fun and exciting too. Mm. You mentioned exploration and adventure a lot. Mm-hmm. How important is that to you? I think that's super important. Yeah, that like reflecting back on it now, it's why I got into photography. Why I picked up a camera was because I'd love going to new places with friends and normally it was a sport or an activity or an adventure or whatever that would take us to those new spots and I think I don't know like the whole I feel like there's just so much to see in the world and so much to do that it's like why be content with surfing the same beach break week after week after week after week after week after week you know what I mean like drive you can drive an hour from your hometown and I bet there's a beach that you haven't been to. Yep. Yeah. And there's probably no one surfing it. I know, yeah. I've had some yeah, some experiences recently when it's been yeah, where I've looked at looked at Google Maps and watched swell swell patterns and weather forecasts and things like that. And yeah, driven an hour from here and scored perfect waves with no one around and I'm kinda like like why not? Like what <laughs> you know what I mean? Like yeah. If you're, yeah, I think if you're willing to go on an adventure and like put yourself out there, give it a crack, you know, what's the worst that can happen? Nothing ventured, nothing gained. 
Oh, for sure. Yeah. That's what they say. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. Especially with surfing. Yeah. And I also think that there's so many like back to surfing being more than just standing up on a wave. The whole culture and lifestyle around it, the adventure side of it is like, I love that just as much as I love surfing because you can read a swell for a couple of days make a plan with your friends go on a road trip camp out for the weekend and like yeah you might spend four or five hours surfing over that weekend but you might spend four or five hours in a car sitting around a campfire telling stories like cracking jokes walking around the rock pools going snorkeling going fishing whatever it may be but like those are all like side effects of going surfing yeah. essentially but they're all so much fun so it's like why not go on an adventure and surfing might be the excuse <laughs> often you don't you get skunked you don't get any waves yeah but you don't re- you don't regret no nah. going exactly yeah some of like most of the best stories and like the funniest memories and things like that are from surf trips that are like it's not when you're surfing the funny moments moments always happen or the, yeah. the best best times always are yeah so you you mentioned the follow the light right and you said that was a goal of yours yeah and you achieved that what's the next goal it's a good question i think it's a funny one winning the follow the light last year it's i don't know it's i feel like there's almost more pressure now than before because looking at my name on that list of the other people that have won it in the past and seeing their work from when they've won it, they've somehow managed to like keep making amazing imagery or new imagery or like finding new angles, all sorts of stuff like that. So I feel like now it's kind of like, I don't know, there's, yeah, there's a lot that I want to shoot all around the world. And I, there's lots of different ways to shoot shot uh, spots that have been shot hundreds of times before too. Um, goal wise I guess like in competitions with photography and things like that I'd I'd love to be recognised or do something with National Geographics at some point it's, it's it's not super related to surfing as such but it's more just like some of their photographers and stuff over the years have been the best in the world like captured the most amazing images that people will talk about for years and years and years to come you know what I mean you could pick up one of their magazines from 20 years ago and a lot of people will recognize that photo um so yeah I'd I'd love to do something either with them or yeah win one of their awards I think that would be do you do more photography outside of surfing or yeah I do um, I guess my my main focus is surfing and seascapes and things like that. Um, but within reason, anything that interests me or inspires me, I'd, I'll shoot it as well. Um, yeah, but then there's, yeah, not always too. <laughs> like fishing, for example, I'm never going to take photos of fishing. I'll, I'll go fishing. <laughs> Or I'll go, yeah, go ride my bike or go tramping or whatever it may be. But I'm probably not going to shoot those things anymore. I'm just focusing on shooting surfing. Yeah. yeah. I'd also, one day I'd love, I sell prints at the moment, um, which is awesome. I think that's probably the best way to appreciate photography is blowing up big, framed, on the wall, whether it's an office or in, in your house or where wherever it may be i think print is is slowly dying with like surfing magazines and things like that but everyone still loves seeing a photo blowing up big like it's you can appreciate that a lot more than looking at it on your phone you know what i mean oh yeah yeah so i think one day like pushing that further i'd love to make a book of some sort Mm -hmm. when i was at university i made one like a just a 130 page kind of magazine i only made 100 copies i think of it um which is cool to look back on but yeah i'd love to come up with some big adventure that kind of deserves t- 
to have a book made about it. Yeah. If that makes sense. I'm not sure exactly what that would look like at the moment, but whether it's, I don't know, a few, a few ideas could be driving around the whole of South America for a year or two with a couple of mates and just going surfing, yeah. exploring new cultures, new places, food, people, landscapes, waves, all of that. But, yeah, I mean, like, who wouldn't love to look at a book full of cool images of a trip like that, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. And going, like, for me, traveling and adventure and things like that, going to different places, places that are out of the way, that are harder to get to, that are more dangerous, whatever, that makes them more interesting to me. Mm. Yeah. Everyone goes to Hawaii Everyone goes to Fiji, everyone goes to Indonesia and stuff, and they have some of the best waves in the world, but you've seen photos of them hundreds and hundreds it's of times. It's been done to death. Yeah. 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 I, I want to see a, some... It sounds like you're very uh, photojournalistic inclined. Yeah. In a way. Yeah, I think so, definitely. Yeah. You would have seen some of the boys, um, Guy Willamant and Spencer Frost and Liddy. And a few of those other boys all went to Russia. Yep. Yeah, they went surfing on the, I think it was a Kamchaka Peninsula, which is like above Japan. Yeah. Surfed in the snow over there for three months. I'm like, that's awesome. No one's been over there, surfed over there, lived over there. Well, from like our point of view, you know what I mean? It's just something so out there and so unique that, yeah, that that inspires me. And trips like that is what I'd yeah, love to do. Mm. Like, why not go to... Chile or I don't know yeah Africa Madagascar <laughs> India like you know there's a lot of countries out there with incredible coastline mm. um, there's also a lot of islands yeah around not far from New Zealand like I mean Norfolk Island I don't know if it's, I'm sure it's been shot before but, but it's probably got good waves <laughs> yeah. I'd say so yeah yeah, yeah so yeah I'd, yeah one of my big goals would be traveling and shooting and surfing for sure. Where to first? <laughs> I don't know. Good question. <laughs> There's too many options at the moment. Yeah, well, you yeah. never know what might happen with Billabong. Yeah, exactly. Might I mean, lead, yeah, lead yeah. somewhere else, and yeah, for sure. But and yeah. it, it, it's a funny one too. I find a lot of a lot of people all around the world, but in New Zealand too, they'll go on surf trips to Hawaii or Indonesia, Bali, wherever. But I feel like there's so many good waves that are undiscovered around New Zealand too. A lot of them have been discovered now, but like there's yeah, there's still places I haven't been. <laughs> haven't been to Taranaki yet. Yeah. yeah. Which blows your mind, but you know, it's it's only a few hours in the car. Yeah, and there's places everywhere. I mean I lived in California, which is crowded it's crazy crowded. Yeah. But you can drive half an hour, an hour out of town and Surf by yourself. Yeah, exactly. And that's true almost anywhere. If you're willing to go mm -hmm. a little bit further than everyone else, you, yeah. you'll find waves that aren't crowded. And that's what every surfer listening to this wants is uncrowded waves. Yeah, exactly. Everyone's yeah. complaining about how crowded it is. and but Just get in the car or yeah. travel. It's, it's, I think travel and adventure is certainly not lost in surfing, um, but it's not as... Uh, Oh, the surfing magazines used to document it so much. Yeah. The whole, that whole traveling adventure yeah. aspect of it. And now it's all, like you said, you know, it's all the best shots from Hawaii or whatever swells. Yeah. At, yeah. It, it's an interesting one. One, another person that's inspired me a lot shooting wise has been Nick Green. I don't know if you've seen some of his stuff. He's based in Tasmania in Aussie. And um, I don't know, it's just he's an amazing photographer but he's shooting waves that a lot of people like i don't know where they are you know a lot of no one's seen them before and he's got some good mates who are incredible surfers who make the place look amazing too but it's like it's all this new imagery coming out of everyone's seen shots of snapper and bells and you know wa and margaret river and all of that but like tasmania yeah it would be cold and stuff but yeah there's Awesome mm. waves everywhere. So, 
just got to go out and find them, I guess, really. Yep. Yeah. Go out and find them. That's yeah. a good place to, to end, man. Thanks so much for taking the time to, no to chat. Yeah, no, I appreciate it. Thanks very much for having me on.